Good evening, and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. The regular meeting of the City Planning Commission will be called to order, and we'll begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendation on land use and zoning matters. Conditional use permits and minor amendment requests will have final action here this evening unless appealed to the City Council in writing within five days. Any decision made on preliminary subdivision plans or future land use amendment requests tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the third council meeting of the month. Any decision made on rezoning requests, major amendments, or ordinance amendments tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the first council meeting of the month. Council meetings are held at 7 p.m. here in the Carnegie Town Hall and are televised. Any action taken here tonight on a final development plan is final. The Planning Commission will first approve the consent agenda and then the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff and the Planning Commission applies the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the City 2015 Land Use Plan. Second, the planning staff recommends approval of the request. And third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. Once the consent agenda items are approved, you are free to leave. For the regular agenda, the following normal public hearing procedure will be followed. By first requesting planning staff to present a brief report on each item. Second, the petitioner will be requested to come forward and make a statement or answer questions. After the petitioner, anyone from the audience who wishes to address a particular agenda item shall be recognized. Then, the Planning Commission will discuss the matter further and take appropriate action. We ask that anyone addressing the Planning Commission other than staff move to the podium microphone, identify themselves, and state their address for the record. Please limit your comments to less than five minutes. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, we ask you please either turn off or silence your cell phone and pager. This meeting is being televised on Channel 16 and will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m., and Wednesday at 1 a.m. Thank you for your cooperation. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Um, I would now like to read the items on the consent agenda. Number one, approval of June 3rd, 2009 minutes of regular meeting. Number two, Platts. Number three, 2009-05-18, a rezone from the C1 Neighborhood Commercial District to the RS2 Residential District for allowed uses at 1100 South Blaine Avenue. Number four, 2009-05-11, a major amendment to subarea E of the Brady Estates Plan Development District to revise subarea boundaries by creating subarea G at northeast corner of South Southeastern Avenue and Marson Drive. Number four, uh, um, the item that I just read has been withdrawn. Number five, 2009-05-19. Conditional use permit in the C3 Central Business District to allow an on-sale alcohol establishment at 330 North Main Avenue. Number six, 2009-06-03, conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow motor, motor vehicle storage sales and display at 1105 South Minnesota Avenue. Number seven, 2009-06-07, conditional use permit in the O Office District and RS2 Residential District to allow a daycare center at 1700 South Cliff Avenue. Number eight, 2009-06-08, final development plan in subarea A of the Diamond Village Plan Development District to construct fourplexes at East 73rd Street and South Tomar Avenue. Number nine, 2009-06-16, a minor amendment in subarea D of the Shadow Creek Plan Development District to allow the installation of athletic field light poles to 90 feet, up to 90 feet in height at South Cliff Avenue and East 69th Street. That concludes the items on the consent agenda. Um, 
is any, does anyone in the audience wish to address any of these issues or move them to the regular agenda? If not, I will call for a motion. I'll move for approval of the consent agenda as read, with item four being withdrawn. Thank you. I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded to accept the consent agenda. Uh, we will now move to the regular agenda. Oh, excuse me. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. We need to vote. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Madam Chair and Commissioners, my name is Steve Randall. I'll be representing staff this evening, and we've received a request on item 11 to withdraw that application. Okay. Number 11 has with, been withdrawn. Okay, number 10 is a report on revised conditional use permit in the I-1 Light Industrial District to allow motor vehicle display and sales and trade and services, including motorized sales at 1700 North Cliff Avenue at, um, oh, it looks like there's a repetition there, at 1700 North Cliff Avenue. Okay. Uh, this is a, uh, a report to the Planning Commission as requested at a uh, previous meeting. Uh, on March 4, 2009, this application for a conditional use permit on the subject property was approved by the Planning Commission uh, to allow motor vehicle display and sales and retail trade and services, uh, including motorized sales, at this address. There are two conditions for approval. Uh, the first one is that all unlicensed and inoperable vehicles were to be removed by May 7th and that all work was to be completed by May 31st, according to a plan that uh, the Planning Commission did look at and approve at that time. And this is a staff report to the Planning Commission on that. Uh, photographs taken by staff and the plan that are in front of you on June 24th, 2009, indicate that the applicant has substantially completed all of the work indicated in their application. Site improvements for maintaining landscape setbacks, uh, storage sheds, providing storage sheds, and providing fencing to screen outdoor storage areas uh, for the storage of motor vehicles and accessories. The applicant, Steve Scarborough, is here this evening and is uh, ready to answer any questions that you might have regarding his business and the conditions for approval. Uh, staff recommends a favorable uh, report. That concludes staff report. There was one uh, phone call received in the zoning office concerning the uh, parking of vehicles on the street. I talked to the applicant about that, and he's ready to respond to that concern this evening. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. Madam Chair. Oh, yes, yes, Steve. So, Steve, you're satisfied uh, that both of the uh, conditions have been met? Uh, that's... Correct. Uh, as far as the uh, vehicles on the street, that I believe has to ha do with the second uh, or the first requirement, I guess, that unauthorized vehicles uh, be removed from the property. Uh, the unauthorized vehicles have to do with the licensing and um, whether they're inoperable or not. If they're inoperable, they're behind the screen fence. If they're operable, they may have been dropped off by uh, a customer and left in the street and. So the applicant, uh, I think, can describe that situation better than I can. And is there, is there any further follow-up then on this conditional use? Staff is not uh, indicating that we should have any additional follow-up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excuse me a moment, Steve. On your report, or, uh, on, on your report, it says that this is just a report on revised conditional use permit. Will there be any action that we will need to take? Not really, unless uh, you feel that there should be some action taken. Okay. You'd have to specify. But as long as you, you're satisfied that um, the conditions have been met. Staff is satisfied. Okay. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Would you like to step up to the microphone, please, and give us your name and address? I'm Steve Scarborough from 1700 North Cliff. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions of Mr. Scarborough from the commission? Madam Chair, Steve, um, it sounds like uh, you have met uh, with the requirements and, and uh, appreciate uh, you doing that. Um, Steve had uh, referred to 
uh, a possible question on cars being dropped off or something. Could you just address that? Well, I had some, I had some people that work at night, and they they'll drop their cars off, and then um, they got ticketed. And then there were some other cars there that were complained about that got towed away. They were not my cars. And they'd been there for a long time. I was just glad to get them out of there. I don't know who they belonged to. One of them at our state place. I checked to make sure they weren't stolen. Hmm. But I'm uh, sales are slow, but I'm not buying cars. I'm getting rid of cars. Um, and as the money allows, I'm, uh, I'm painting trim and uh, fixing up. Good. From the pictures, it's a definite, uh, definite improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from, from Mr. Scarborough? Thank you very much, and thank, thank you, you for, um, for all your efforts. <clears throat> Since there's no action needed on number 10 we, and number 11 has been withdrawn, we will move on to number 12. 2009-06-05, a rezone from the RS2 Residential District in the North American Baptist Seminary Plan Development District to a sub-area A of Sanford USD Medical Center Plan Development District for allowed uses from 22nd to 26th Streets and from Grange to Coval <coughs> Avenue. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Commission. My name is Dave Loveland, and I'll be representing staff on this and additional items this evening. Uh, the petition before you is to, as, as was stated, to rezone property that uh, Sanford Health had acquired from the North American Baptist Seminary. Uh, several years ago, and at this point, they're, um, they would like to bring that property into their subdivision, um, their plan development district, excuse me. The area of the site is 19.7 acres, and um, surrounding uses include to the north, Sanford, U Sanford Health facilities. To the south, there's RS2 residential district, which is uh, single family residential, which is also to the east. And to the west, single-family residential exists and in institutional, including First Baptist Church and Jefferson Elementary School. Uh, this, the purpose of the plan development district was to allow for continued expansion and development of medical-related facilities, including education and research. In this particular area, Sanford Health owns approximately 34 of the 53 properties included in the rezoning request. Um, they did send a letter to property owners within this area, and as of this afternoon, as of tonight, I, we had not received any requests from property owners to remove themselves from the rezoning petition. Uh, the special information, Sanford Health, um, as I just stated, um, they notified the property owners in conformance with the requirement that has recently been adopted by the city council in which um, mem people who are petitioning for a rezoning notify the property owners affected um, directly within the, within the rezoning request. So Sanford Health has done that. In addition, they also held a neighborhood meeting on June 22nd, which uh, the applicant can, can provide additional information on. Um, we, there's waters available. Platting fees may apply if subject property is replatted. Um, drainage BMPs are likely to be required at the time of redevelopment in the area. Um, we have received calls on this item, mostly curiosity calls, although there, are, there is a member of the public here this evening that I think would like to address you on this item. Um, but because the subject application maintains the ability for residential uses and helps define future expansion area for Sanford Health, uh, we are recommending approval of the rezoning. And I can take any questions you may have. Any questions of Dave? Madam Chair, Dave, let, let me just get this straight. That, um, there, I own a property, let's say, in this in this area, mm -hmm. and it, it is being rezoned from the RS2 to the uh, plan development. What, what happened now? My property is now no longer RS2. Can, can you explain that a little bit more? That's correct. Um, the plan development district itself encompasses underlying zoning districts, which we call conventional zoning districts, which include the RS2, RA1, those types of um, zoning districts. And so... The allowed uses within that plan development district now include include the institutional district, which um, Stanford has always held in that area. And then recently, last fall, we um, 
a major amendment was approved by the Planning Commission and City Council, which also added RS2 uses, residential uses, to the plan development district. So any property owners in this district that own a house and, you know, want to stay there for a while have the right, all rights associated with the RS2 district, including, you know, being able to build a fence, a shed, you know, as long as they conform with the standards within that district. So it does, it does not um, affect their ability to, to use their property as they previously were able to. Thank you. Okay. Well, Dave, I, I think in, in addition to that, if they wanted to do some work on their house that required a permit, like any homeowner, they would be allowed to re-roof their house. That's absolutely correct. Put up a fence, do whatever they. Yep, that's absolutely they correct. To do. So, and I did. Yeah, I think I, I may have mentioned it, but I want to reiterate too that uh, because of Sanford's letter, they did within their letter they explained to property owners that if they did not want to be a part of that plan development district to contact our office uh, to remove themselves, we haven't received any phone calls to that effect. Um, so. As of now, the, the district is as, as how it's presented. Now, if Sanford wanted to do something with some of their properties there, they would have to come back. That's correct. Through they, this, show everybody what they're doing. and Yep, then need to do a final development plan for any, for any buildings and um, site development. Things like parking lots are accessory uses within there and, and do not require a final development plan. So. Thank you, David. Thanks. Madam Chair, Dave, um, Part of this block or blocks is already the NAVS PD, correct? Right. Yep. And the rest of it is is it kind of a hodgepodge of what is RS2 versus? Yeah. Uh, I think if you could go back to the zoning map, um, you can see in the southwest corner of the highlighted site that that's still the RS2 district. Otherwise, the rest of that um, site is the North American Baptist Seminary PD. So. That's really the only part in the uh, southwest corner that's going to go from ours to to plan development right. district. Yeah, that's correct. With this application. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions of Dave? Madam Chair. Yes. And Dave, one, one more. Um, you, you said that in the letter, in, in the letter they sent out to the neighbors, they said that if you want to pull your property uh, from this. You could do so. Mm -hmm. Is there a deadline can, after this meeting? If people are just realizing what that means, can they come back? Yeah, they to could do that? certainly call our office, and we would explain that to the city council at their, at you know, by the time of their hearing. Um, once the city council adopts a rezoning, then that would be final action. So. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Is the applicant present? Good evening, Orlin Cheddar, Vice President of Facilities at Sanford Health. Thank you for considering, considering our request this evening. As you've heard, this property, with the exception of that corner, uh, which is located the block, the southwest corner of this rezone request, is currently in the North American Baptist Plan Development District. The block uh, that was indicated, I believe, in yellow in a previous slide down in that southwest corner, um, there being indicated on the screen at this point in time uh, was not part of the North American Baptist Plan Development District, but we are asking to rezone that corner as well. In that block, there is one remaining property that Sanford Health does not own. Um, in response to com some concerns over um, a rezoning request that we had some months ago, uh, we took uh, rather painstaking efforts this time to make certain that all the potential uh, folks impacted by this rezoning request were notified. A letter under my signature went out in certified mail for every property owner within the corridor that we're asking to rezone. That was a total of 14 letters. Those were sent on June 2nd. Uh, along with that, there were 60 additional letters that were sent inviting uh, anyone that was in a very generous 300 foot radius of the property that we're asking to rezone. Those 60 additional letters or a total of 74 total letters were sent notifying uh, not only the people within the corridor as I mentioned by certified mail but those people uh, adjacent to those properties um, 
received a letter of invitation as well to the uh, neighborhood meeting that was held on 622. We had seven property owners within the corridor that attended our neighborhood meeting, along with 20 additional individuals who have properties in that 300 plus foot uh, perimeter around the properties that attended the meeting. We responded to a number of questions, primarily uh, related to what our plan is for this particular property. Uh, we answered that question by indicating that it's our intention to uh, begin doing education in the buildings that currently exist, the NABs buildings uh, that we took possession of today. We do plan um, to have those folks from our education department, our Center for Learning, move in sometime later this summer, again, into existing buildings. We have no uh, plans for additional buildings at this point in time. We did also mention that there are um, three to four properties along Grange Avenue. Um, if we could go back to that map, uh, if you look at the large, it's right along Grange Avenue directly below the um, northeast corner is a large block area. Those properties, whoop, got you back right to the, starting right there and going to the south, there's three or four homes in that area, thank you, that's perfect, that are badly blighted. These homes are uh, not inhabitable, they have not been rented for uh, some period of time. Uh, in fact, uh, there were uh, windows broken, doors standing open, etc. Uh, we have secured those buildings, but it's our intention to raise those buildings sometime yet this fall and take those properties back to grade and plant grass. So we did indicate we'd be removing those. Um, there were a couple questions from property owners outside of the corridor asking how they would potentially be impacted by a rezone. And obviously we can only speak from opinion, but in our opinion they will not be impacted by a rezone. Uh, if they're not uh, directly in the property or in the corridor. I have received two or three phone calls since our neighborhood meeting from other uh, neighbors who received the letter but were not able to attend our meeting. Uh, again, similar questions with similar responses. Um, and those folks were also uh, notified, as you were already told by letter, that if they're a property owner within the corridor and they prefer not to be a part of the rezone, that they simply need to contact the city and make that known. Uh, on a light note, I did have one of our uh, neighbors that was within the corridor suggest that the refreshments we provide at our neighborhood meeting were uh, substandard, asked if we could perhaps uh, consider being a little uh, more generous in that regard. We'll take that into consideration for future meetings. And uh, unless you have questions, that ends my comments. You might want to let them know that. <laughs> in the letter, perhaps? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions of Orlin? Thank you. Thank you, Orlin. Anyone in the audience wishing to address this issue? If not, we'll call for a motion. I think we've addressed this issue. Of Excuse me just a moment, ma'am. Would you please give us your name and address? I'm Diane Hoovey. I live at 812 Southwest Avenue. I'm one of the homes that they rezoned the area and was very little notification. And <clears throat> I think Sanford's done enough damage in our community. I think it's about time this place starts telling them no. We're done. You've taken and ripped our neighborhoods apart. And now my house is going to be the only house in that block and I bet you I can't sell it to anybody but Sanford, because I bet you any one of you wouldn't want to live where I live now. And you guys keep passing them, and you guys keep letting them take up some more neighborhoods and, ho and houses that are affordable. I want you all to find me a place where I can live for $500 a month for mortgage payments. I can't find one. And right now I bet you I can't find a buyer for my house because I've got buildings all the way around me and I, they've got every piece of my property around me done and I'm the only one left and one in the corner. And the neighbor lady next to me says she's going to because she says I don't want to live here when they start having that Ronald McDonald house opened up to public coming in and moving around. So you probably haven't heard complaints because people don't realize what they're walking into in neighborhoods until it's too late. 
and you get institutionalized before you know what's happened to you. Instead of asking us if we want it and sign off on it, no, we have to sign not to have it done to you. I don't think this is one bit fair as we as citizens of Sioux Falls lose our property unknowingly to us unless we keep tabs of you people. Okay, just a moment. Hold on just a second. Um, Steve, can you show me on this map where her house is? I'm right down behind Ronald McDonald House, she's, 812 Southwest Avenue. She's north of 17th Street, so she was um, part of the last mess. The rezoning that was considered before, but she had opted to take her property out of that. So she's. But if I had known about it, I would have been institutional. So she's this. not on this map. She's further to the north. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. But being you guys are going to plan again for another whole neighborhood, I'm here to stand and say enough is enough. You tell Sanford, no, you've got what you got for land, utilize it wisely, and you're done. No more neighborhoods have to go through what we went through. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to address this item? My name is Sarah Alexander and I live at 817 Menlo. And I guess um, having been a part of the last um, round of this difficulty, I would want um, the board to look very closely at the letters they sent and make sure that those letters are understandable. Um, in the last round, people had to contact their own lawyers and they really didn't completely understand what was going on until it was almost too late. And, and so I th putting the letters up there, that was not enough time to read them and to really consider if people had been really were able to understand all of this. And yes, they had a community meeting, but they had a community meeting sponsored by the very people who want the land and want the thing zoning. So how can you truly trust what those people are saying? So I guess um, I think it's very, very important that you carefully consider what's been said to these people and is it understandable and do they need further advice on it or further time on it. Ma'am, did you attend the neighborhood meeting? No, I did not know about it. And I would consider myself actually living fairly close to this. I walk my dog in that neighborhood constantly. And I'm shocked that I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it until I looked at the agenda for this meeting. And the reason I looked at the agenda for this meeting is because I'm very close to the heart hospital, which I'm going to talk about later. But, and I saw the zoning sign for that. And I had no clue. And I feel like, 300 yards around a zoned area is not much. We're a neighborhood that the blocks are very small. I feel very close to what's going to happen, and I had no clue that this was going to go on. I did see the article in the, in the Argus Leader about it, but only after the fact. And, you know, I feel like we're entitled to more discussion. And, in fact, at the end of the whole thing that took place last fall, the city talked to us and said, could you, could you talk to us about the community, you know, or talk to us about what people are thinking? It would have been nice if they'd given us a call to say, this is happening. Keep us, you know, what, why don't you find out what's going on or something. You know, they, you could have done that. Um, but, you know, I guess they, it's easier to just take a small group and don't really let them know what's going on in the other side of, this, of the hospital. Okay, hold on just a second, and let me just see if there are any other commissioners that have any questions of you. Any questions? Hey, Madam Chair. Sure. Um, miss, um, 8112 Menlo. Can, can you, 817. 817. Can you describe where that is? Yes. Um, I'm all confused on this. I, I see Menlo Avenue there. What, have you got a pen? On, on the very right. I think I'm going to find it. I can't. I can't read the. Can someone point out where um, the Grange and 18th are? Oh, that's Menlo. And where's the? In this map, I can't figure it out. If you know where um, the cardiac building is in real in real life you know where 18th and Grange where the heart hospital is going to go and across the street is the cardiac thing I'm directly behind that it's a little a small block that 
I'm very fearful of going at, at a later time. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, and, and, and thank you. The reason I'm, I'm looking for that is just to understand um, when letters were sent out this time, mm -hmm. why you didn't receive a letter. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm sure they thought I was too far away. Yeah. Okay, thank but you. The, but the reality is is that people go up and down. There's a park up there, and there's a lot of stuff up there. So you go up and down that street all the time. I feel like I'm connected to that, that part of it. But. Okay, any other, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, anyone else in the audience wishing to address this item? If not, we will. Mentor, before you yes. uh, close up, may I ask uh, Orlin? Uh, I know you said it, but uh, in that block that's not uh, a PD right now, the NAVS PD. Correct. You said you owned how many? Or did not own. There's how many one remaining owned? structure we do not own. One remaining, uh, and that's in the southwest. In that, that block. In that block that we saw is a yellow block. Mm -hmm. In that, uh, in that full block, there's one property we do not own. So any other uh, non-Sanford-owned homes is already in a PD. It's in the NAVS PD. Um, within that block, I want to make sure I understand your question. That block has not been part of the NABS PD. Right, and you own them all but one there. Correct. The rest of the non Sanford owned homes in right. the proposed uh, rezone mm -hmm. are in the NABS PD already. Correct. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Orlin. Okay. Call for a motion. Madam Chair. Yes. I would make the motion to approve the rezone on item 12. Second. I second it. Okay. Discussion. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? On my short time on this uh, committee, this is probably well, at least the second time we've had major conversation about Sanford and the expansion of their medical facility over there. Uh, I'm not sure when the NABS PD was, was created, but certainly at some time somebody looked at that for the Baptist Seminary and decided that this was an area that they could expand in. I think Obviously, what we have here is Sanford buying the property from the Baptist Seminary. I'm not sure what the differential would be between the Baptist Seminary and Sanford. Uh, I sympathize with some of the folks that have lived in the area for a, a long period of time, but I'm going to support the motion uh, for the expansion of this for Sanford. I, I sense the lady's frustration, and I think that I think that's part of the rule change we're dealing with today, as far as being sure that everybody is notified as to what's going on in the affected area. And obviously, that didn't happen before. But uh, that being said, I'm I'm going to support that this motion. Any other discussion? Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, number 13, 2009-04-14, conditional use permit in the C2 General <clears throat> Commercial District to allow an on-sale alcohol establishment at 2019 South Minnesota Avenue. Staff report. Uh, the project name here is Tiny's Pool and Darts. Uh, the applicant is Chad Fetters and Greg Rowling of the uh, business. The owner of the property is Sam Asson. Uh, the request is for a conditional use permit in this zoning district to allow an on-sale alcohol establishment 
for the purpose of providing uh, recreational entertainment to adults over 21 with on and off sale beverages um, in the establishment. They would have to apply for licenses for those uh, alcohol uses. Considering the land use this evening, it's currently a vacant commercial building and uh, includes the rear yards of existing residential development, also owned by the owner of the property and is being rented for residential dwelling units. Uh, according to the comprehensive plan, it does conform uh, for those uses that are existing. On sale and off sale alcohol are uses allowed in the C2 General Commercial District uh, by conditional use. North of the subject property is also C2 commercial. We have commercial and housing rental units to the south, uh, commercial and office in the C2 district and office district and to the east uh, in C2 across the street uh, is commercial and to the west it is zoned RA1 in a residential neighborhood with uh, existing housing units that are individually owned uh, by property owners. I've indicated in your staff report the two um, permit uh, standards for off-sale and on-sale alcohol uh, beverage establishments, uh, indicating that for off-sale, if it is found that the location is compatible with characteristics of surrounding uses and not injurious to surrounding properties and a management plan is provided to address operational issues, including employee training and supervision of customers, enforcement of age-restricted product sales and smoking policy on the premises, for establishments within 500 feet of a school property. And for on-sale uh, establishment, that it not create an undue concentration of similar uses, that it's not in an area where children could be expected to frequent patronize or recreate, and that it is compatible with characteristics of surrounding uses and not injurious to surrounding properties. The applicant has provided uh, adequate plans to satisfactorily describe the proposed business and site improvements that are required by our zoning ordinance for parking. Um, generally, when we have existing pavement around an existing uh, building in a commercial zone, we do not require them to uh, remove that paving in order to conform to the existing landscaping ordinance. Uh, that is uh, a policy that we have in zoning and building services. However, uh, the Planning Commission does have the opportunity to consider landscaping as part of their approval process. Otherwise, the applicant did have to apply for a variance to reduce the parking requirement from 39 spaces to 38 and did receive approval of that variance. Uh, the applicant otherwise uh, has provided us with a plan that conforms to all other zoning requirements. They're not proposing any other improvements to the site except the required screening, which would be a fence against the residential uses. And uh, they are also indicating that they would provide security lighting if it's required. The applicant has stated that the crime prevention officer has reviewed and re approved the plans that are submitted because of the proximity to residential uses. Staff is also recommending that the applicant respond to security management of the parking lot at closing time, which would be 2 o'clock in the morning. Because the applicant uh, has provided uh, clarity to the application location, nature and extent of the work proposed, and we have not received any calls on this, staff is recommending approval of the conditional use subject to three stipulations. First one being that a security management plan is approved by the City Police Department for on sale and off sale uh, be required. Second, that the parking lot security lighting plan be reviewed by the City Police Department and approved by Zoning and Building Services. And third, that outdoor seating be prohibited. That concludes staff report. Steve, I have a question for you. Um, on page 33, uh, the first full paragraph, it says the subject property is adjacent to existing single-family residential housing and is within 600 feet of Mark Twain Elementary School and Augustana College. The applicant is responsible for informing both schools about this application should be prepared to report any comments from neighboring residential property owners along Spring Avenue. Have you had any further discussion with the applicant about that? I did ask the applicant if they had contacted the schools and they indicated that they had and had not received any concerns either from uh, Mark Twain or Augustana College. Okay, okay. Any questions of Steve? Madam Chair, Steve, 
uh, the residential property behind this, I believe, is owned by the same individual that owns this particular building. That's right. Have these lots been replatted? Has this parking area behind this building been platted off or taken away from the two residential lots? Uh, if we could pull up the zoning map again, it shows the platted property lines as currently platted. Um, <clears throat> you can see that the zoning line is not a property line. The zoning separation between C2 commercial and RA1 is not a platted property line. It happens right in the middle of the property. Steve, my concern with this particular situation is I think those two houses back there, I have no idea, and maybe Mr. Brassum is here this evening can answer this for us. It looked to me like they might be getting ready to take these houses down. I drove by those. It looked like they had been maybe disconnecting the sewers. I'm not – if the thought here is to access from this parking lot onto Spring, that's not something that I personally feel comfortable with, but I'm trying to figure out how we cannot keep that from happening. I did uh, talk to the applicant about that when they brought their application in. They had indicated on their plan a connection from the parking lot over to Spring. And I indicated to the applicant at that time that staff probably would not support that because of the residential neighborhood and mixing commercial traffic, especially bar mm -hmm. traffic, with a residential street. And uh, a subsequent plan that was provided by the applicant uh, did not show that connection anymore, but the applicant did indicate that the owner of the property has plans to remove those structures, and that's all I know. As when far as uh, what this body can do uh, is that uh, additional conditions can be put on to the approval of this project if you so wish. Would something like uh, another stipulation that's saying that there can be no uh, – a driveway or egress connection to the west on the Spring Avenue will ever be allowed for this particular business? Sounds appropriate to me if you want to do that. I've thought about, you had mentioned earlier about talking about putting a fence up. Is, is that one of the stipulations? I don't think it is. Uh, the fence is required by the zoning ordinance, and it's indicated on the plan. It is. Uh, okay. It's our policy not to stipulate that for approval. Um, the zoners will uh, catch that on the, on the letter for approval. Uh, the only way to guarantee that situation, I guess, uh, and not have the applicant come back and request that the fence not be required is to stipulate the fence being provided as a condition for approval. Staff didn't recommend putting Staff that Staff didn't do it because uh, typically if they meet the requirements of the ordinance on their plan, then we do not stipulate that for approval. By showing us that plan, that's not necessarily a guarantee that that's going to be done the way it's not. No, that's, you're right. Thank you, Steve. Madam Chair. Steve. Um, would this same hold true for the uh, landscaping then, too? It's, there's landscaping on Minnesota Avenue and also some trees in the back. The same would be true. If you, if you wanted the landscaping to be put in as it's shown on the plan, you would have to stipulate that. That's a part of Minnesota Avenue that doesn't have much in front, so I, I would think that it would be appropriate to uh, get that if uh, You have but, some precedence for that. I believe at the last Planning Commission meeting you – uh, stipulated approval of a plan subject to additional landscaping being provided and actually gave them some options as to how to provide it. Thank you. Any other questions of Steve? Okay, thank you very much, Steve. Is the applicant present, please? Hello, my name is Chad Fetters. Um, I live at 24487 464th Avenue, Colton, South Dakota. I'm having trouble hearing you. Could you speak <clears throat> up, please? My name is Chad Fetters. 
I live at 24487 464th Avenue, Colton, South Dakota. Okay, any questions of Mr. Fetters? Madam Chair, Chad, I'm not trying to be difficult with you, but I, I've struggled with this allowing a beer tavern here in my mind right adjacent to residential property. You might run the best, cleanest business in town, but when th things get late, things get noisy, sometimes things get you might not have control of, we have a tendency to hear about those things. What's kind of got me open-minded about this is your landlord owns the property right directly behind this building. So then I think, well, if he feels comfortable, uh, is it going to affect his tenants or isn't it? I'm not sure. I hope you can appreciate if I put a stipulation in here about no, no exiting out onto Spring Avenue, I hope you can appreciate my reasoning for wanting to do that. I think just some late time traffic in and out of a parking lot onto basically a residential block, I don't think it's best planning on our part. I completely understand that. Okay. Any other questions of Mr. Fetters? Okay, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Anyone in the audience wishing to address item 13? If not, we'll call for a motion. Madam Chair, I would make a motion for approval, but I would like to add two stipulations okay. in addition to the three that are there that a conditional use permit be granted with an additional stipulation that there will be no access onto Spring Avenue from this particular parking lot. Uh, and that there, uh, I'm going to add that there be a fence put between the single family and this particular parking lot, although I could certainly easily be talked out of that if, depending <laughs> on how you guys feel about that. I guess in my mind, I'm just thinking it's the same owner that owns the two, well, I believe it's two houses, it might be three houses right directly to the west. So I sit and I go, well, if it doesn't bother him, you know, that's, that would be the most impacted. But I will add that stipulation. We can, we can talk about it and see what everybody, how you guys feel. Yes. Just a clarification, that fence location would be at the parking lot or at the property line? It would be at the, uh, where it is zoned. Or zoned. Okay, the motion's been made with two added stipulations. Is there a second? Madam Chair, point of clarification, would, we, would I need to clarify the type of fence? Staff, help me with that. They're saying yes. What are we, what's typically apropos for if fencing? You're, if you something? identify it as a screen fence, then they have to meet those requirements down in building services. If you have a particular type of fence in mind, that's certainly appropriate. I don't, but I'm thinking of uh, height. Is uh, Are we allowed to have a six-foot fence on a back property line? Yes, you are, and you could specify the height. The minimum requirement now is five feet. I'd say six uh, uh, screen fence. Okay, motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Thank you, Meredith. <laughs> uh, Ken, was there some reason why um, you didn't want to stipulate the landscaping as the uh, site uh, I drawing? That perhaps that's something you wanted to put in there. <laughs> okay. Um, Again, type. So, I would like to make a substitute motion adding an additional stipulation that the landscaping per the submitted uh, site drawing. That would be the, sorry, Pam. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so basically I think what we need to do then is Ken needs to withdraw his motion. Huh? He has a motion, a substitute motion. That includes yours. my three stipulations? Yes. yes. I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. 
Okay, so would you like to make your motion? Kim, what was your step? Oh. I, I would make that motion. Kim that has just withdrawn his. And so now Can we, we withdraw if there's you. a second on his? Is that? Nope. I made the substitute. Substitute. On the substitute. Yeah. So we need a second on my motion. Yes. Second. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> what exactly was your motion again, Ken? <laughs> that Just, the, uh, the, the landscaping. That the landscaping be as um, presented as, to us. As presented in the site plan. But it still has the same five conditions that. that yeah, Ken we're right. adding mine on. Yep. 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 Okay. 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 Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? I think that would make me feel more comfortable approving this with its proximity to residential. Okay. Um, I don't know how the rest of you might feel about that, but. I do have some concerns about the residential. Um, there, there's a potential for children to be there, and we know from other um, establishments that we've had in the city that, have, that are open late at night, like this would be, that there's the potential for lots of noise, um, traffic, um, headlights and windows, uh, different things that are going to keep the neighborhood awake. And it's, you know, while it's a good place on Minnesota Avenue for this building, I, I'm just concerned about the residential behind it. That I, I know we're going to be hearing, I'm certain we're going to be hearing of issues with you, the traffic later on. Do you feel these stipulations will help? Well, they'll help from the standpoint of keeping the cars going through. I noticed that at the back of that driveway right now of this building, there's a path where people have driven between the two buildings. And, and if that's blocked off with a fence, that would no longer be a concern. But I still think there's the potential for noise and headlights in a neighborhood area that I have concerns about based on past experience. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Just as a point of clarification, I think the fence was stated to be at the property where it was zoned. So is that cutting the, because it's zoned twice or two different ways, right? Well, it cuts right through the middle of the property. Yeah. So how is that going to be for the residents? Are they going to have a, a fence through their property, through their backyard? I'm just trying to. I think that. that's what the owner and this tenant are going to have to have a discussion about. Okay. Uh, as far as is this the right business to be at this particular location with these stipulations, I could support it. Uh, without them, I, I, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable supporting mm -hmm. this particular business at that location. Any further discussion? Did, did that answer your question, Darla? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Number 14. Madam Chair, uh, you passed just the substitute motion. You need to vote on the, on the other motion now, the first motion, to approve it. You, you approved his substitute motion. And so now before you is, is, is the conditional use with the six stipulations instead of the... Oh, I'm sorry. I Okay, I forgot the... Okay. So now we have an additional stipulation. Sorry about that. Okay. All in favor of the first motion with six stipulations, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Number 14, 2009-06-10, a minor amendment in subarea A to allow a reduction in the required setback along Grange Avenue for the placement of an electrical vault at West 18th Street and Grange Avenue. Staff report. Good evening again. Um, I'll be presenting items 14, 15, and 16 if, it's, if it pleases the chair. Sure. In in one report and then separate action will be taken on the three items. Um, the first item that, w that I'll be discussing is the minor amendment, as you read, um, to allow a reduction in the required setback to allow the placement of an electrical vault. Sanford Health uh, before you is proposing a um, heart hospital 
in, in order to construct some of the basic utilities and the ventilation and um, some of the electrical requirements for it, they need an electrical vault. They've done numerous different site, site designs, and this is the location at which the uh, vault works the best for them. Um, and so I would like to mention that um, this is in relation to the following two items. So, the, so as I go on, then you'll get the entire story of the, of the proposal before you. But the minor amendments would need to be approved before the final development plan. So that's why they're on the agenda first. Um, so this specific request is to allow placement of the electric vault in the required front yard setback. The required setback is 25 feet. And the applicant is request, requesting a setback of 13.5 feet. And uh, this request is for the electrical vault only, and no other structures are proposed that would encroach into that required setback. Um, because the application meets all other setback requirements, we are recommending approval of that particular item. The second minor amendment um, is 2009-06-11. That is a minor amendment in subarea A of the Sanford USD Medical Center Plan Development District to allow the relocation of required street trees for utility placement. The, um, this specific request is to allow the removal of the required street trees from in front of the parking ramp along West 18th Street that are there currently and, and replace them with additional trees in front and near the proposed Heart Hospital. A utility tunnel uh, needs to be built along the West 18th Street frontage to carry utilities for the service of the new building. Uh, this tunnel would not allow the space needed to ensure healthy root systems and spacing for the trees along the street frontage in front of the parking ramp. And so therefore the applicant is requesting permission to remove those trees and replace them by placing them in front of or near the, the heart hospital itself. But based upon a one, one tree per 50 foot, per 50 frontage feet requirement, there are 30 trees required to be placed along West 18th and South Grange Avenue near the heart hospital and that includes the existing parking ramp. The applicant is proposing to plant 14 trees in addition to the 16 that are already in place, and then that would, that would bring their total up to the required 30. The submitted plans um, also show sod and river rock along with 60 smaller shrubs to enhance the landscaping of the site. Um, as I stated, the tree count total would be 30 with 14 new trees in addition to the 16 that are existing, and um, they are proposing uh, the new trees to be ver different varieties of maples. Uh, we haven't conditioned the typical ash tree condition because they've um, already indicated that they'd be maple trees. So um, with that said, I'll move on to the final development plan, which is item number 16, petition number 2009-06-12. Um, the applicant is Orland Cheddar of the Sanford USD Medical Center, and uh, they are um, requesting final development plan approval for the construction of their heart hospital. Um, it may, members of the commission may remember that the last time a final development plan was before you for approval in, in the Sanford Plan Development District, it was for the construction of the Children's Hospital, and that was approved in June of 2007. The area to be impacted on their campus is about two acres in size, and um, the surrounding uses, the surrounding properties are all owned by Sanford Health, and they're within, or they're, I shouldn't say owned, but they are within the Sanford USD Medical Center Plan Development District. To the north is a parking lot. To the south is a hospital tower. To the east is multifamily residential. And then to the west is the remainder of the hospital campus. Um, so recent property um, acquisitions, uh, the Hart Hospital itself would be about five stories in height. And recent property acquisitions in the area allow for additional parking to be constructed nearby to replace those being lost with the placement of the building. I think some of the parking lots that have been constructed recently to the north of 18th Street and then um, along the east side of Grange Avenue would provide the parking necessary for the, the complex itself. Um, to, and speaking on the parking, uh, 160 parking stalls would be required to be added because of the Heart Hospital. And Sanford Health keeps on file with the city a campus-wide master parking plan. With the recent addition of several parking lots, the campus as a whole has 4,188 parking stalls and is required to have a total of 3,654, and that's according to estimates that were provided by the applicant um, at the time of application. So as we stated before, the landscaping um, is under your consideration um, as the minor amendment. Um, the signage, monument sign style sign is to be located at the northeast corner of the site 
and that's on your screen right now. Um, the monument, the monument sign itself will be 6.5 feet in height and 28 and a half feet in length. But the actual area for the signage would be about 10 feet by 2 feet, which would be a 20 square foot sign, um, according to how this we calculate sign area. Um, a 30 square foot sign is proposed above the main entrance to the Hart Hospital, along with the four or five foot radius signs at the top of the clock tower. And I think those four or five foot radius signs are, um, we're not shown to have any lettering on them, but the uh, chevron that Sanford uses as their logo. Um, as I stated, the building type would be a five story hospital with a clock tower, arcade, and pitched roof. Uh, the exterior wall materials are precast panels with brick veneer and uh, the roof would be a synthetic slate material. The maximum height of the proposed building is five stories or approximately 122 feet. And um, the engineer, the city engineer has indicated that uh, comments have been provided to the applicant on, on um, engineering concerns. And as a, at the time of the drafting of the report, uh, the engineering office had not yet received comments back. So the applicant may be able to address any questions you have on that. Um, as you can see on the elevation, you see in shadow on the left-hand side a, a uh, part of the a potential pedestrian bridge that is not part of the approval process, and they'd come back before you later on that um, with the, uh, with possible potential additional buildings to the east is is why that's shown. Um, so as we stated, um, the. I did want to mention too, and I believe that I did not include that in your report, um, is that when the Sanford Sioux Valley at the time plan development district was approved, the height regulations were amended to allow a 12 store, up to a 12 story heart hospital. And um, as you can see that this proposal right now is for a five story hospital. So um, you wouldn't be approving a 12 story hospital, it's just the five, but uh, just to reiterate that there's there's already been an initial discussion of something up to 12 feet and that had received approval by the city, so for 12 stories. So because the subject application provides for a well-designed structure and is in conformance with required regulations and previous approval, we are recommending, and previous approvals, we are recommending approval of this final development plan. I did want to let you know that we have um, spoken to um, members of the community that are here tonight and have spoken earlier and I think that they'd like to address you again. Um, beyond that, we, um, have not received um, additional phone calls on this proposal. It was the it was the one person who had talked to us. So, with that, I can take any of your questions. Any questions Madam, for Sam? Madam Chair, Dave, um, in regard to item 15 on the uh, trees. Yes. Uh, it's just for the trees. It wouldn't be for other landscaping and shrubs. Those could still remain. Yes. Yep. Yep. In fact, I think on their plan, they've indicated that they, that those will be part of the attempt to soften the effect because of the removal of the trees, so. Okay. Okay, let's back up and go to item 14 then. Um, any questions for Dave on item 14? Madam Chair. Yes. Dave, and I, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm thinking right to the east of where this is going, there is a, uh, well, I, I, I believe it's a hotel. How many floors is that? Do you, can you just off the top, anybody I off the top here? Two, head? I believe. It's two. I think two. Two or three, I think. Yeah. I was thinking maybe it was three, but maybe it is only two. Uh, it is three. Sorry. Does engineering have any concern about traffic on, on this particular corner? I know 18th Street, I believe, has been widened there. I, if I'm not mistaken, there's three lanes with a turn lane. Yep. Grange is pretty much still a two-lane arterial. Yep. Uh, is there any plans in the work or we will hear an awful lot from engineering about setbacks on, you know, from from two arterials crossing each other, access, and both of these we're not are, hearing that. Right. And both of these roads are, are actually collectors. Collectors? Yep. They're not arterial streets. And so um, we, uh, as far as I know, and Jeff can correct me if I'm wrong, there are no plans for uh, expanding Grange in the right now. So. And engineering has no... They haven't made any sure, comments no regarding that. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so right now we're talking about item 14, 14. in the vault. Yes. Okay. Yep. Any other questions of Dave? Madam Chair. Yes. Dave, the, um, 
the electrical vault is a superstructure. Uh, is that correct? It well, is above ground. Yes, it would be. A, a, I think it was six feet on their elevations, if I remember right, above ground, above grade. That was a question I was going to ask before okay. the rest of it, but uh, thank you. Any other questions pertaining to item 14? Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Is the applicant present? I guess I should say would the applicant step forward. <laughs> Thank you. Orland Cheddar again with Sanford Health. Are confining our comments to item 14? Item 14 right now. Um, our engineering folks are here, and just one point of clarification, the electrical vault actually only sticks out of the ground one foot, approximately one foot. It is a larger vault than that, but that would be below grade. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of Orlin? Yeah, Madam Chair, um, Mr. Cheddar, the the vault sticks up 12 inches, but it, it has transformers on top of it, or um, I should defer to Ray. I'm confident that the the items that are located inside of the vault would be below that uh, 12 inches above grade, with nothing above that. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Perfect. Thank you. I'm not the engineer. Anything else? Any other questions pertaining to item 14? Okay, thank you, Mr. Cheddar. <clears throat> Anyone in the audience wishing to address this item? We're just doing 14. This is the electrical vault. Okay, if no one else has any comments about item 14, I'm going to call for a motion. I'll move for approval of item 14. All second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, motion's been made and seconded for to pass item number 14. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item 14 passes. Now item 15. Um, staff has already given their report, so Orlin, would you please step forward? I do have just one comment on item 15, again, of clarification. Um, I, I believe, if I understood Mr. Loveland correctly, he mentioned that the uh, area that will house the underground utilities, which is the reason why those trees have to be moved, would be a tunnel-type structure. That, that is incorrect. Uh, the utilities would be buried there but there's not actually an underground structure or a tunnel uh, in that area. It would be uh, opened, of course, and those utilities placed in, but then they would be uh, covered. It would be an earthen uh, structure as opposed to a concrete or a steel structure underneath uh, that area of the, the uh, ground, so there is not a tunnel in that location. Is that the way you understood it, Dave? Okay. I, and I may not have heard him correctly. I just want to make sure that I clarified that. So. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Cheddar uh, concerning item number 15? Thank you. Anyone in the audience wishing to address item 15? If not, we'll call for a motion. Madam Chair, I'll move for approval of the minor amendment on item 15. I will second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? If no discussion, all in favor of item 15 say aye. 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 Opposed? Item 15 passes. Item 16. Mr. Cheddar, would you step forward, please? Um. On this particular item, I, I believe that uh, the description that was given by Mr. Loveland was very accurate. You were able to see a artist's rendition or a drawing, I should say, from our um, architectural firm. Uh, unless there's questions, I don't believe I have any additional comments. Any questions of Mr. Cheddar on item 16? Madam Chair, Orlin, uh, the pitched roof, what's why go into that versus the flat roof like the rest of your buildings would be? This building is being designed in a collegiate Gothic design. Um, as you're well aware, the building that was just built on the east side of our campus was built with a very unique 
structure, a very unique look. Uh, it's our intention as we continue to uh, build buildings on our campus to have them identified by a particular type of architecture or structure. Uh, in this particular case, um, uh, Collegiate Gothic was chosen because we believe that it adds a uh, particular um, view and a particular look to the community and to the campus uh, that separates it from that industrial um, commercial type feeling and gives it more of an educational type, um, again, more of a college campus type look. Uh, other than that, uh, there's no structural reason or any other uh, uh, physical reason why we chose that structure other than just the aesthetics of that building and how it fits into the community. And I, I think it probably softens it a bit too for the uh, and, and we the certainly believe that neighborhood. as well, yes. Marlon, what, what is your time frame well, if this passes when yeah, we have not yet determined exactly when we would start the project. We're very eager to uh, start yet this fall. Our hope would be that we would be able to begin construction. Uh, there will be some grade work that's necessary there in order for it to start. Um, we would like to start the project um, mid-September to early October, and it's approximately a 26-month, 27-month construction time frame. Uh, so our goal um, to start this fall uh, also hinges on the importance of having the structure enclosed by next fall, by next fall I mean uh, 2010, uh, in order to allow work to continue during the winter months in an enclosed structure. Thank you. I should have mentioned one other thing if I may. The parking was discussed. Um, two of the three parking lots that are being constructed to uh, take the volume of uh, cars that will be dislocated by uh, this construction project and then also the future use of that building. Two of those um, parking lots opened early uh, today, uh, located north of 17th Street between, well, right at uh, Euclid Avenue, one on either side east and west of Euclid Avenue. So two of those three lots are already open. The third uh, hopefully will open later this month. Any other questions of Mr. Cheddar? Okay, thank you. Anyone in the audience wishing to address item 16? Madam Chairman, my name is Janet Van Hoovey, 812 Southwest Avenue. I have three questions of you folks. First of all, why are we putting another heart hospital in our city when we already got a heart hospital in our town? That's quite adequate. We're misusing Sanford's land again, and then they'll need some more residential areas for something else. So why are we approving this? Well, just, just for a point of clarification, the Planning Commission's main objective is to deal with land use issues. And if the, if the land is appropriate for the use, that's what we deal with. Um, there is an appeals process, and you can certainly, uh, oh. We're not, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, just, you can just call the planning office okay. for, you know, any further right. information. Right, because but, I'm but thinking this body use deals, it for something else because they've already got a heart hospital in town. This body deals with land use Usage. only. Okay, why can't they go any higher than so many feet? Why can't they go higher up when they build? Why do they obviously have to keep going out? Why can't they go 20 feet up in the air, or stories or whatever, because they were saying how many stories up they could go. Why can't we go higher? There are some restrictions on that, and if, would you like to? What? Okay. Okay. And oh, okay. Question. Well, the third question was: I noticed that all of you were concerned about, you know, where the the liquor place was going to be to residential and lights shining in when people are going in and out. That's what I live in now. That Sanford's got what they've got around me. The people coming in are going to be coming in and out. The drive is literally coming right on to West Avenue. And you seem to be very concerned about that. But Sanford can just keep plucking away hood after hood. And I don't see much caution issued. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeffrey Schmidt, representing planning staff. Um, on this and other items, the first item in regards to why would we allow or you vote on a heart hospital, um, again, Pam answered that question. We, we 
don't really deal with market. Um, it, we could have the same question we've, I've had it frequently on, why are you allowing a Burger King on this corner? Well, we don't pick and choose McDonald's or Burger King's. I don't get to pick and choose that I like Target over a Walmart. That's not our challenge. So if the applicant wants to build something on this property, they have the right to build on their property. Same thing for housing. If someone wants to build a house, they have a right to build a house. We can't say, we already have too many houses in Sioux Falls, you can't build another house. Um, they have a right to do that. Then you have to start looking at the standards for those types of things. That was her second question. Why don't you make them, well, we would like to, we could ask for, but you can't require people to do things always bigger and better. Same. Um, discussion. We may want better housing in Sioux Falls, we may want better restaurants in Sioux Falls, but they still only have to meet minimum standards. This example here, Dave mentioned that they could do a 12-story, but they don't have to do a 12-story building. She brings up a good point. Yes, we would like a 12-story building. I mean, it would be nice for Sioux Falls. I could stand up here as a city planner and say, we have a 12-story heart hospital but I can't require them to build that. It's their funds, it's their hospital, they have the right to build what they want. Um, on the third one, that's really the question. That's why you're looking at a final development plan. The previous item that she talked about, the on sale, that was a conditional use. On conditional uses, you're able to put conditions upon that use to mitigate any impacts. A final development plan is similar um, where you can look at, is this proposal in compliance with what they said they were going to do? So when they came in and rezoned it, when they rezoned the NABS property, they had a set of standards that said, we're going to build in this type of character. So when they put a heart hospital here, they say, we're going to build in this type of standard. Now you have to look at it and kind of go, does it meet these types of issues? And you can put some stipulations and conditions on there. But again, they absolutely have a right to build a hospital on their property. But you can look at how it's kind of designed to meet the function of that corner. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff, her, excuse me, her concern about the parking lot is certainly one I had back when we enlarged this district to the north. Uh, there's just not a simple answer to that, that that I can see. I think we've made them put in fencing. I think we regulate the type of light, lights they can use. Uh, I sense her frustration, but I don't know what more we could do to soften, to soften that sort of parking lot effect. Um. You're absolutely right. It's the difference between a minimal and a maximum requirement. Um, if we had maybe more support from the community, and again, what I'm going to try to lead to is you can't pick and choose who you're going to go after. You can't always say, we're going to just say, Sanford, we want you to build a parking ramp and it needs to be six stories tall. If you're going to do that, you require of Vera to do that and Wells Fargo to do that and you require Augustana to do that, anybody that comes in then meets those minimum standards. But what usually happens is we say, this one applicant, we want you to do that. Everybody else is fine, do surface parking and put up a fence. But we want you over here to, we try not to discriminate, we don't pick on, so that's why they're minimum standards and you said, Tiny's has to put up a fence and screen. Sanford has to put up a fence and screen. Okay, the next one has to, that, that's our standards. They, if we want to change that, well then everybody has to meet those same standards. And in the past, we haven't told everybody in the city of Sioux Falls that they have to meet these really expensive standards. Jeff, thank you for those comments. Yeah. Um, I, I would just like to, uh, Diane, did, did you get some of your questions answered? Yeah, you did a great job, thank you, Jeff. My name is Sarah Alexander and I live at 817 Mendel. And I guess I have several concerns in the construction that divide into things around congestion, noise for pedestrians, 
and uh, parking, as some people have already brought up. Um, my first question has to do with what time um, the construction vehicles are supposed to um, be beginning in the morning, because when the parking lots were constructed to the north of the hospital, they began at 6.15, 6.30. They were very noisy, and this was very, very disruptive to the neighborhood. And um, I think people say, well, they'll not start till 7 or something, but they're always early, and they turn on their trucks, and they let their trucks idle, and this is very, very noisy to the neighborhood. Um, and so that's one issue I have. We already deal with the medevac um, helicopter on a regular basis, um, and that's very noisy. And so, you know, we need to have some consideration around the noise of the construction vehicles. Um, another issue has to do with um, the sidewalks along the Hart Hospital while it's going on construction. Are they planning on closing off those sidewalks while they're doing the construction? Um, because that's a really major pedestrian area. A lot of people who are visitors to the hospital park over in those parking lots and they cross over and they walk on that. And so if that's going to be closed, that's going to be a big issue. Plus, this is a pretty significant residential area. People are walking at a lot of different times of the day and that um, they need to be able to get on those sidewalks. So that's another issue I have while the construction's going on. Um, and how, if they are closed, how long are they going to be closed and where do people go? Um, then I think during construction, as with the parking lot, there's overflow parking that goes on um, and the construction vehicles. And so I'm wondering where they're going to park. Um, and, you know, I guess this whole question of parking um, extends also um, to when there's more people coming um, they only really gained about 200 parking spaces with that, the parking lots they did on the north, and that's not really <laughs> very much for the amount of homes and neighborhood, the part of the neighborhood that they destroyed with that. And currently, many people park on 17th, uh, where my alley comes out, and I can barely get out of my alley because there's so much street parking. And then I predict that people will be in front of my house as well, and there, I know they're in front of a lot of other people's homes on the street right now. So we may be coming back to the city and asking for no parking on those places so the people from, that come to the hospital will need to find another way to get there. Um, I guess my concern is that one, um, you know, it's a, you can talk about, well, we don't expect Stanford to do something different than all the other institutions, but the, the, what you say is it's okay to just gobble up neighborhoods and build parking lots instead of expecting them to build up. And that, that to me, there's a lot of long-term consequences to that. Um, and then um, another issue is the um, blue light that is currently on around all the buildings of Sanford, which is also particularly in the winter very, very distracting and you feel like you live next to a carnival. So I'm wondering if a blue light is going to go on this um, more university looking building. Is that also going to have the Sanford blue light at the top? Um, and will we expect more lights from this area, which is um, important to the residents? Um, and um, the last thing I have concern about is the thoroughfares, Grange and um, 18th right now, where this is going to be located, are extremely busy streets, especially between 6.15 and 7 in the morning when the 7 o'clock shift begins. I try to walk my dog, and I cannot cross that street easily um, unless I'm at the light, and the traffic goes way back. And then when school starts, there's also a school on that street. It goes, it's very, very crowded, as is 22nd. And Grange is a small street, so I'm, I'm really quite concerned about what the effect of the traffic is going to be and what the city is hoping to do to mitigate that for people in that. I also think people um, go too fast down Grange, um, and there's, somebody's going to get killed one of these days on that street because they're rushing, and the closer it gets to 7 o'clock, the faster those cars go. Um, and my last thought is where, if, if during the construction we have a complaint about what is happening, who do we call? And um, 
how can we expect it to be addressed? Okay, thank you very much. Um, any questions of Sarah? I think what we need to do is have Mr. Cheddar come back up and address these concerns. Thank you very much. I'll do my best to try and remember the questions. I may need some prompting if you can I, help I me. have them written okay. down. So uh, I, first, and I guess the first one to address ahead. is the truck starting early in the morning. Yeah, uh, we will uh, obviously work with uh, our general contractor regarding start time. Um, there, there's no getting around it. This is going to be a noisy, difficult construction area for a period of time. We'll do our best to uh, soften that as best we can, but it will involve, especially in the early stages, it will involve heavy equipment, it will involve cranes. There will be some inconveniences uh, in terms of start time. That is something that we can control. Um, when we arrive at what is believed to be a reasonable start time, I don't know if that's 7 a.m. or what particular time that would be, uh, but we'll do our very best to try and uh, uh, control that early morning start to the best of our ability. Okay. Um, second one was, uh, uh, are the sidewalks going to be closed in that area? Uh, the answer is yes. There will be sidewalks closed on the uh, west side of Grange Avenue and the north side of, well, excuse me, the south side of 18th Street. So if you picture the new building, um, the adjacent sidewalks will be closed during construction. That area will be fenced for safety to keep anyone uh, from entering that area. Uh, there is a plan in place, however, for the sidewalks on the opposite sides of those streets to remain open. And during the time that there is construction, we have already, uh, in fact, we just met yesterday and had lengthy discussion about how we change signage to allow people to be able to come to our campus and find the appropriate parking areas as well as the entrances that they need to use. Uh, so we'll do that with signage, but the answer is yes. The sidewalks on the um, west side of Grange and, and north side, excuse me, south side of 18th Street will be closed during construction. Okay. Um, <clears throat> where will the construction vehicles be parking? Uh, construction vehicles will, um, we have a staging area uh, directly to the east of the uh, construction project. There he's drawing a circle or an area around it. There's a, a, a temporary parking lot there now which will become a construction staging area. And we also sought and received permission to use again just to the east of that lot and slightly to the south. There's another area that will be allowed for uh, construction staging and that will allow for parking as well. Okay. Um, the next concern was the blue light around the building. Will there be a blue light? I believe there was a question about whether or not there would be blue lights. The answer is yes. Will there be one that runs around the perimeter of the building? Yes. There will be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, where would they, if they have complaints, who can they call? There will be a number of opportunities or people for them to contact. They can certainly call me. My direct phone number at uh, my office is 333-6391. Again, 333-6391. Or you can call the main operator, our, our regular hospital number, if you lose this number, and ask for me. Or there will be an on-site construction supervisor. Uh, that will be working with and for Henry Carlson Company. And those folks will carry a cell phone that I don't have with me tonight, but we can provide that. So there would be an opportunity to call directly to the supervisor or the superintendent of the project. Sarah, did you get that number? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, that answers. There was answers one more question about parking. Was you, there? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. um, thank you for giving out your number. That's, uh, I'm sure going to be helpful for the mm -hmm. uh, neighborhood. But the question I have is um, for street parking, and I can appreciate Sarah's concern, you know, all over. Uh, how does it work with your employees? Do they all get a parking pass to go on the lots and then the ramp? Or how, what's your policy on that? And are they, but could there be employees or visitors or that wouldn't have a place to park? Uh, there certainly is adequate parking, as I think was demonstrated earlier in the numbers, that we exceed by a significant number 
the number of overall parking places that are required. There are uh, parking passes that are uh, given to employees uh, during their orientation process when they come to work for us. That allows them to park in our uh, parking ramps or on our surface parking lots. Um, we know and we understand that some people choose to park on city streets. It's unfortunate. We ask them not to, but we have no ability to patrol or control that if they make that choice. If there's a violation of parking, for example, a driveway that's blocked or parking in front of uh, an area where you can't get in and out of property that's owned, that's really a police matter, and we encourage people to call the police to have those problems resolved. We as an organization, as an employer, have no ability to enforce that. I sent a memo uh, as early as yesterday, which I'm not able to replicate for you here tonight, but in that memo, reminding our employee group that these new parking lots opened today, I reminded empl our employee group uh, in mass via email again that we don't want our employees to park on city streets. We don't want them to park in residential neighborhoods. We do not have the ability, however, to force that. We, we can ask them. We can hope that they comply. Uh, but in some cases, people make those choices, and we just simply... Uh, don't have the ability to change that. Sure. Well, the encouragement and yeah, reminders, I think, will help as much as you can. Yeah. There was also a question about parking lots versus parking ramps. May I address that as well? Sure. It's primarily an economic decision. Uh, currently, the cost of developing a single space for a car to park on grade is about $8,000. If you develop that same parking stall, single parking stall, in an elevated structure or a parking ramp, the cost is about $32,000 or four times greater for an elevated structure. Um, I would also submit that a large uh, parking ramp in these uh, neighborhoods or residential areas uh, certainly is not a structure that we would desire. Uh, we would prefer not to have that type of a building. And uh, again, driven almost exclusively by the economics and the cost. Okay, any other questions of Mr. Cheddar? Oh, congestion, the traffic congestion on Grange and 18th. Yeah, again, I, I would have to defer to the city. Uh, we have no ability to control yeah. traffic, so I'd have to perhaps. Mr. Schmidt or someone could address that. Uh, just one thing I would like to mention, Orlin. Yeah. Um, just from my own personal experience, uh, my office is downtown, and when they were ripping up Phillips Avenue, which was rather difficult, they were very, um, very good about keeping tenants and people downtown informed, sent out a construction schedule. Um, it, which was really very helpful. Uh, just a suggestion that might be something you'd want to consider doing with the neighborhoods because it, um, it really avoided a lot of frustration. I'm wondering, as you mentioned that, if it wouldn't be possible for us to put that information, uh, post it somehow on our website so that it would be available to everyone as opposed to trying to identify who may be interested in receiving and who may not be. I think that would be a great idea. We can certainly consider doing that. Yeah. Okay, just a second. Let's just let um, Jeff. I think Jeff has something oh. to consider. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cheddar. The question from the back was in regards to the congestion and traffic right. flow. Um, that is a city issue um, that we would look at for traffic flow and traffic speeds, and that's in traffic engineering. So traffic I will engineering. follow up with traffic engineering on that. Do you ha do you know that number off the top of your head? N no. Okay. No, I do not know the volumes or the speeds okay. on 18th and Grange. So that number can be found in the government section of the of the phone book under traffic engineering. And it's on our city website, too. We keep current volumes on our city website of all the traffic counts that we do on an annual basis. But I just... Okay. That's all. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Anyone else wishing to address this issue? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Bob Sievertson. My home is at 1124 West 20th. Uh, that's between Wallace and... Uh, Mellow on 20th. And I, uh, I didn't intend to speak today, but I do have some information about the, about the parking problem. Uh, at 6.35 tomorrow morning in my house, 
Midwest Mechanical will uh, will start parking a half a dozen cars in front of my house and across the street from my house. And at that time, the parking lots are empty. And, and, and I visit with those, those, those guys. I seem to be nice enough guys. Why do you do this? Sioux Valley Hospital prohibits us to park in their lot. Uh, that's, sir, that's the only thing. Uh, it, it's just, it's just a, a matter of, uh, I, I recognize in a progressive city, you, you know, you got to break a few shells. But I just think they're bad neighbors. Thank you very much. Any, just a moment. Any questions of Mr. Severson? Mr. Severson, would you please have a chair? Just have a chair. Have a chair. We'll, we'll, um, we'll call Mr. Um, oh, okay. Could I request a response to my complaint from, from, from the hospital? Um, Could I do that, Madam Chair? Why don't you go ahead and have a chair, and we'll ask Mr. Cheddar if, that, if that's a policy. Thank you. I can certainly appreciate his concern. If his vehicle's parking in front of his home, uh, that would be troublesome and problematic. We have no argument with that. We have instructed uh, some of our contractors, depending on the size of the project and the time that they're on our campus, to find alternate parking and not use our patient and employee parking for their vehicles. We did not, however, suggest that they park in front of someone's home or on a city street. In fact, on certain projects, we have specifically said that they have to park off of our campus. And in some cases, I know that contractors have made arrangements to park in commercial parking lots and get their employees there uh, through some other means. As far as the specific complaint that this gentleman is discussing, um, I think he has the story close to right. I don't believe it's 100% accurate because, as I said, we have not instructed anyone to park in residential neighborhoods. Okay. Okay, any questions of Orlan once again on this issue? Okay, thank you, Orlan. I, I think that, um, I, I think that if, if that is an issue for you, Mr. Severson, a suggestion earlier it was, uh, you know, maybe you need to just call the police department. If they're parking illegally, you need to call the police department. Okay, is there, are there are anyone else wishing to address these issues? <laughs> okay, just one minute. Um, go ahead. It'll, it'll take me less than that. I, I would like assurance from the hospital that, that if it's true, as those construction or those mechanical, uh, Midwest mechanicals say that they're pro pro prohibited from parking in Sioux Valley parking lots, that they would assure me that, uh, that, that uh, they'll correct that problem. Well, I, I tell you what, this body does not really deal with, with okay. these parking issues, and I think that it would be a good idea if you wrote down Orlin's phone number and you could talk to Orlin directly. Well, I'll, uh, maybe we can get the other afternoon. Okay. Thank All right. Very Thank much. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We're going to close public testimony. Um, call for a motion. Madam Chair. Yes. I'll uh, move for approval of final development plan on uh, item 16. Okay. Madam Chair, I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in <clears throat> favor of item 16, say aye. 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 Opposed? Item 16 passes. Item number 17, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, repealing the revised ordinances of the city by amending Appendix D, entitled Floodplain Management Ordinance of Sioux Falls. Good evening, Jeff Schmidt from the City of Sioux Falls on this planning issue for the floodplain. Beginning back in 1979, the City of Sioux Falls started working with the Federal Emergency Management Administration to discuss and work on the floodplains in the city of Sioux Falls. Starting on September 28th of 1982, FEMA issued the flood insurance rate map, the firm map that we actually have in place. So the one that we're currently using now is from September of 1982. 
that identified the special flood hazard areas with letters for that area. Those areas had a 1% annual chance of flooding in our community. Um, it used to be called a 100-year uh, floodplain. Um, that was always a misunderstanding. It's a 1% annual chance. Now, as of February of 2008, FEMA provided us with new updated maps in 2008 and has walked us through a process of a comment period, an appeal period on these preliminary maps, and then gave us a letter of final determination to update these maps. And the letter of final determination states that we have until September 2nd to adopt these maps and comply with the federal regulations. As long as we apply and get these maps adopted and move forward with our new federal regulations, we can still participate with the federal um, floodplain insurance program as well as continue to receive federal funds if we ever have flooding. And obviously for anybody listening at home and, and for the planning commissioners and the, two, the audience is the gone, two, Jeff. The two young ladies that are still here this evening. Um, since 1881, the Big Sioux River's flooded 17 times and Skunk Creek has flooded seven times. Um, the most recent one that we've had um, was May of May 29th of 2004 and June 16th of 2004 when we had the rainfall events. That's really what happens in Sioux Falls. Um, Sioux Falls is in a bowl. The rainfall comes. Um, we have flooding in Sioux Falls. And if we do not proceed forward with these flood insurance issues, um, we would no longer be able to participate in flood insurance for the city of Sioux Falls. Okay. Thank you for your report. And you are going, you want us to approve the new flood ordinance. Flood ordinance. Correct. Okay. Any questions of Jeff? If none, anyone wishing to address this item at this time? Okay, if nobody's into floodplains, um, call for a motion. <laughs> You've had to sit out there a lot, haven't you? <laughs> okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? I will second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in, in any discussion? I am glad to see her, Madam Chair. Yes. I, am, I am glad to see that it does say floodplain management as opposed to flood control. You can't control floods. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor of approving item 17, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 17 passes. Can I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. So moved. I have a second. Motion has been made a sec and seconded. Meeting adjourned. Oh, excuse me. We better vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>